What's up, guys? This is Rise, and welcome to another video. Today, we're showcasing a team featuring one of my favorite Pokemon to use, Shadow Charizard in the Go Battle League. And this team comes from a friend of mine, one of the best battlers of all time, and a legend in the community. It's Axe and the World Champion. And uh, shout out to him for suggesting this team. The Great League Remix has been a little bit of an up and down meta for me. We've had some really rough days on stream. We've also hit Legend in this meta. So we've been up and down. It's been a bit of a yo-yo. But we had a lot of success with this team. We're going to feature two sets here with Gudra, Shadow Charizard, and Registeel. And this team, a little bit double weak to Quagsire in the back. So sometimes we're going to try and swap that right of steel to potentially lure out a Quagsire. Gudra, very strong neutral Pokemon in the lead. And if you can, you want to try and save those Protect Shields for Shadow Charizard, which is just such a menacing sweeper Pokemon, which we will see happen multiple times in this video. So here we go. Also, Axon has uh, started posting youtube videos as well and he is killing the youtube game so feel free to check him out over there and we are starting things off with the jellicent do you want to shield the shadow ball in this matchup i mean it's really up to you you are like i said better off sometimes saving those shields for the charizard but they're unlikely gonna bait usually so i do find sometimes it, it's useful to shield the shadow ball i'm not gonna want to use both shields however so i will take the second shadow ball and go for the dragon breath down and I am able to secure the one shield scenario in this matchup. In comes Toxicroak, and it's a good thing we got switch advantage because we really want to align our Charizard here if possible. Charizard comes in, they immediately swap into Gligar. I am going to actually try to go to the Blast Burn. I'm debating whether I want to shield here or not, and I do decide to shield the Aerial Ace, and I'm going to build up, I'm going to bait the Blast Burn decide to go for it the dragon claw instead the opponent makes a terrific call calls the bait we're gonna try and get the final shield here with the dragon claw and we do get that shield i do one wing attack trying to catch an aerial ace i'm unsuccessful but now the gligar is in a weird position right because aerial ace is obviously not enough they're gonna have to expend both digs here so i think the opponent might have been better off um like saving the energy and going into toxicroak but instead, they unleash the dig. Now Charizard comes back, and I'm actually going to be able to outpace the Toxicroak before it gets to a move to the Dragon Claw. Charizard is so quick. We got there just before the Mud Bomb, and a couple of wing attacks are going to knock out the Gligar and deliver us this game one win to start off the video. Charizard just such a menacing Pokemon. So fun to use, in my opinion. Those high attack Pokemon can be more difficult to use because they require a little bit more care. <laughs> um, they're, you have to be more careful with where you expend those shields. Sometimes you have a little bit less time to react because your health goes by so fast, but they can be so dangerous. Here we see Mandibuzz in the lead. I would say a slightly favorable matchup for the Gudra because of that Thunder Punch coverage, but a pretty neutral matchup. They swap Ferrothorn. Now, should I have swapped Redisteel here? Maybe. But the opponent doesn't have Thunder. They're running Mirror Shots. This is amazing for us. If they had Thunder, I probably would have had to go down a Shield here to respect it. But Mirror Shot, they actually didn't even bother building up to the Thunder. So maybe they could have built up to it just to threaten it. I'm going to go up all the way to 100 energy. Go for the Blast Burn here. They let it go. Charizard has so much energy here to threaten whatever comes in. They come in with Mandibuzz. I do four Wing Attacks. Building up this energy. Blast Burn is so threatening here. Look at that. Oh, actually, it got a shield. <laughs> I was about to say, look at that damage, but no, it got a shield instead. They are going to go for an Aerial Ice, and it does knock out. I was hoping maybe I would hang on, but no, Aerial Ice still knocks out. Now, normally, you'd come in Registeel here, but the fact that they swapped out earlier led me to believe maybe they have another Gudra answer in the back, like another Steel type. So I actually came in with Gudra here, and I shield to preserve it. I'm going to throw the Thunder Punch here. This is going to hopefully connect onto Mandibuzz. And I'm going to throw this Aqua Tail before Mandibuzz can get off another charge attack. This will either knock it out or force the final shield. I get the final shield. I catch onto Registeel. This way I keep Guja around in case it's viable against whatever's in the back. Registeel up a shield against Magnezone. And this should be smooth sailing. Because it's a non-shadow Magnezone, I figure I can withstand a wild charge no problem. So I don't bother shielding. If it was a shadow, maybe I would have respected it with a shield there but non-shadow i'm chilling they baited the mirror shot focus blast still enough to knock out even though i think we got debuffed 
and that is a G to the G. The little fighter pose from uh, Legend this season. Let me know what you think about the Legend poses. <laughs> Everyone was saying it's a, it's a dumb pose. It's a dumb pose. I'm a, I'm a UFC fan. Some of you guys know I did martial arts when I was young. I got a black belt in karate, and eventually branched off into more um, common American sports like American football and basketball. So uh, I have a bit of a martial arts background though from when I was younger and became a UFC fan when I got a little bit older. So I think the, the like boxing little stances is, is kind of fun, but my favorite legend pose is still gotta be the season two shrug. Even though I wouldn't necessarily consider myself like, um, like people say like Michael Jordan, right? Would be like their favorite player of all time. Like I'm, I'm not like, uh, a Jordan fan in that sense where like he's my favorite player or anything but like I'm a Jordan fan in the sense that I'm a basketball fan right so like the Jordan shrug is such a legendary basketball moment that's why I think that's why I like that shrug pose we go uh okay so we have Gudra versus Mantine here and we go for that thunder punch immediately on the charge attack priority that way even if they ice beam us we guarantee we get off a thunder punch so we get the shield advantage they're going to get off another move here, and I'm going to gauge how much this does, because I'm really close to that Thunder Punch, but I don't think I live a wing attack, so I'm going to have to settle for the Aqua Tail here. Our opponent should know with their counting that this is just an Aqua Tail, so very nice by them. I come in with Registeel here, and we're going to go for a very aggressive lock on down. Now, is this the right play? I don't know. <laughs> this is very aggressive. We take one Water Pulse. We're going to end up taking a second Water Pulse, so I could have thrown the Focus Blast, right? to knock it out before taking this water pulse instead i elect to take the water pulse worth of damage in exchange for coming out of here with 100 energy to threaten whatever comes in our opponent's thinking so they don't seem to have an obvious answer or at least something that doesn't want to take this energy they come in with a polyrath polyrath does not want to take a zapkin i assume they're going to shield this but no they take it and then in comes steelix so i'm like okay i can simply just focus blast those shield and I'll go in with Charizard and I'll Blast Burn for the win. So I go for the Focus Blast and no, they're just not shielding anything apparently. Uh, so that was pretty weird game. But uh, yeah, Reggie, um, Reggie could hit for, could uh, really threaten everything on their team. So a pretty comfortable win there. And um, I think that, yeah, that lock on down ended up just being so massive for us. They probably would have been better off pivoting into Steelix or maybe even pivoting Polyrath right away. So we get a 4-1 set there, I think. And then I think this set came a few sets later. So these, I don't know if these were back-to-back -back sets. These might have been two um, separate sets, like a few sets in between. But here we go. Gudra into Quag. And they save swap Charizard. I don't really have a counter swap, right? So I'm going to be forced to stay in. Um, the opponent was worried about the catch. They actually didn't throw right away. They could have thrown before me. I then swap into my own Zard. And I'm going to call that this is just a Claw and not a Blast Burn. Blast Burn would nearly knock me out here. It is luckily just a Claw. Blast Burn honestly might have one-shot me. So that was a little bit risky to no shield. I go for the Claw. I win the chart attack priority. They shield. So I'm up two shields now which is great, and I'm like, at this point, you know, I'm just going to let this go, and I feel like I can probably Dragon Breath down before they can get to another Claw, so I'm going to take the two shield advantage, but he does get switched, so he does get Quag aligned with, um, with Reggie, so this is a little bit concerning. Now, I could have potentially used my shields here to try and, like, work my way through the Weezing. Instead, I swap in Reggie, little bit afraid of like the overheat and dip right so i do put up a shield i get baited by the brutal swing it's a little bit scary for sure once again i don't want to get overheated so i am gonna shield i get baited again by the brutal swing who knows maybe they don't even have overheat though they might be running brutal swing play rough i have seen that move set in this meta we do land the focus blast and if they don't have mud bomb or even if they do have mud bomb we might be able to get to double focus blast here before they even get to two moves because we were so far ahead on energy it's just an Aqua Tail. And then check this out. We get to another Focus Blast before they even get to a second Aqua Tail. So Reggie's still very healthy. And I'm feeling pretty good here. And I actually just stay in. Oh, no. That's so unsatisfying. Editor Chris. That is awful. Editor Chris. 
yikes, he might uh, he might be getting fired. Um, but basically, in that end game, let's rewind a little bit. So after we knock out the uh, Quagsire here. Oh, man, I don't know how that got cut off like that. What the heck happened? Yeah, we knock out the Quagsire here with the Focus Blast. Oh, you know what? This actually wasn't Editor Chris's fault. The opponent actually top-lefted there. The opponent actually top-lefted. So, it wasn't totally Editor Chris's fault. It was, it was still cut off a little early, so we didn't see the top-left. But the opponent top left it there. So they must have not even had overheat. If they had overheat, they could have overheated us. But then I think Brutal Swing wouldn't be enough to knock out Gudra before Gudra could knock out the Weezing. So the opponent top left it. Editor Chris got to be a little bit cleaner with the cut there. Now we face a superior while someone is trying to scam call us. Trying to distract us from winning this game. And I'm like, bro. Are you trying to tank my ELO while I'm live on stream? Frenzy Plant chips us. In comes Steelix. We've got all that energy banked on Gudra. Hopefully we can use for later. Going to go for the Focus Blast here. And I'm a little bit concerned about a potential carbon get back. We land the Focus Blast, which makes our job easy here. I'm going to shield because he did build up to the Earthquake. And even if he baits me, he's not going to reach Earthquake. So this is huge for us. We shield, we farm down, and they top left. So... <laughs> I'm thinking it was probably Carbink, to be honest. Um, if he, like, two-shielded his way through that matchup and chipped the Reggie quite a bit, he might have been able to win that game, honestly, because Steelix can actually, like, just brute force its way with the Dragon Tails and, like, Psychic Fangs or Crunch to really chip Reggie. Because if you just go straight Crunch, I don't know if he was running Crunch, but... If you, could, if you just go straight crunch and you're, you swap first, right? You're going to get off three crunches. And then that final crunch that connects is going to put Reggie low after all the dragon tails. So next opponent, who's it going to be? Who's up for the fight? Blepnir. Okay, this was a pretty crazy battle. If you made it this far in the video, you're in for a treat. Bronzong. We're going to safe swap Reggie. In comes Polyrad. Now, if you're in this situation... It's not the best, but Reggie can pull shields here. So we're going to go for the Zap Cannon. We really are hoping for that debuff as well. At 67%, we get that debuff. And I am going to actually respect a potential Scald or Dynamic Punch here with a shield. It's actually Dynamic Punch. So we shield to get off the Zap Cannon to draw that final shield from our opponent. And now you might be thinking, Rise, he already revealed Dynamic Punch, so he's probably not running Scald. You should come in with Charizard. No, we're actually going to come in with Gudra. And the reason is we need to preserve the health on our Charizard to try and sweep this game. Gudra is not going to be much use to us against that Bronzong or La Bronzong, as I like to call it. So we just use Gudra as an as a damage sponge. In comes Manti. And can Charizard pull off the impossible here? Can Charizard pull off the sweep? I don't know. This is a lot of work to do for Charizard. We're over farming. We got to be on point with our counts. We can do three wing attacks here before Mantine reaches another aerial ace. We throw on the charge attack priority. We're going to throw the dragon claw here. This should be enough to knock out. Kind of lost track of where Polly was, to be honest, in terms of how much I could over farm here. So I do three. Looks like I could have probably done one more. But we throw dragon claw here. And now I play to my win condition. So I do two, I do one, I transfer the confusion, and Blepnir makes a bit of a mistake. He actually throws energy at the Gudra to knock it out. And this allows me to do one wing attack and reach the blast burn before the confusion damage registers. So definitely a bit of a game I'm sure Blepnir wishes he could have back. He definitely had me there. We got lucky, we played to our win condition. And Charizard was able to find a way to win. Blepnir's a hilarious um, streamer. I recommend you go follow him. He always does his battles on the treadmill. And uh, if you're looking to burn calories, get exercise. I mean, that's a great way, honestly. Take your mind off the uh, off the walking. Do some GBL on the treadmill or while you're walking outside. 
I could totally see myself though if I was doing GBL outside. Like, I do go for walks pretty frequently at the moment. Um, if I was doing GBL though, I could definitely see myself like walking into somebody. All right, Gudra into Swampert, positive lead, and this is where we want to see the Swampert. They swap into Gudra, and something really small I did there is I stayed in a little bit longer. Like, I could have swapped maybe a second, half second quicker into Reggie, but I stayed in for a brief moment just to do a little bit more Dragon Breath damage, because now this Focus Blast will do enough because of that Dragon Breath chip where I can lock on down. If I don't, if I swap in a little bit quicker... I don't do as much chip damage, and Gudra might actually reach a third Aqua Tail here, which could threaten to knock me out. So that little chip actually helps me secure this matchup a lot more comfortably. And our opponent top lefts, because they feel like, oh, this is pretty bad. Reggie gets off a Focus Blast. I probably have to shield it. Then I have to throw energy. They felt like they couldn't really overcome that situation. So G to the G. Maybe they knew the team. Maybe they knew whatever was in the back was going to struggle against Charizard as well. So, yeah. Honestly, though, if it was Double Dragon, well, if it was Double Dragon, well, <laughs> I just, like, went back and forth in my head, like, three times on, like, whether that would be good or bad. If it was Double Dragon, like, Dragonite, let's say they Earthquake Gudra and I let it go or something, then Dragonite might just sweep more fast move pressure than uh, Charizard. Because I don't think Charizard would even reach two dragon claws potentially in that matchup anyway gudra into jelly once again i don't always play this matchup the same and sometimes you find that in pokemon go pvp sometimes you don't always play a matchup the same way this opponent switches into quag which is potentially beneficial for us because this is gudra's probably our better quag answer and then check out what happens here this is like literally mauled city like if you could draw up the worst possible situation i get baited with aqua tail and then with two hp the supposing quagsire gets off the stone edge like oh my god brutal i probably should have caught that on reggie to be honest that would have been really nice and then on top of that this is a misplay why expend the energy here? The much better play would have been to swap Reggie, and then they would have been forced to swap Jelly. And then I would have had Zard aligned with A9 in the endgame. Do I win? I don't know. But I would have been able to keep that Thunder Punch maybe for the Jelly. I don't know. So I feel like I just made multiple mistakes in this game where everything kind of went sideways. And uh, our opponent made some really nice plays. So credit to them. Just completely outplayed us here. But we're going to keep fighting this out. Try and find a win condition. Jelly over farming. Going to throw another attack at us. Surf's up, dude. Going to go for another zap cannon here. Registeel trying to put the team on its back. Does really well against both of these remaining Pokemon, however. We're down two shields. Jelly's got so much energy. I don't believe they've seen the Charizard yet. And unfortunately, when shields are down, Charizard just is going to struggle. Maybe if I, like, caught here, I would have had a chance. But unfortunately, I don't catch. And um, Charizard's going to come in. One thing I could have done, as you're going to see, is throw Claw right here. But I didn't think Claw would KO from this range. I guess it was my only play was to at least try. But Claw is double resisted by that fairy typing, so I didn't think it was enough. And um, that is going to be an L there. So nearly a 5-0. We get Articuno as a little bit of a reward. And I think that was a very winnable game. Like, for example, if I call the Aqua Tail bait, if I shield Stone Edge correctly, if I catch Stone Edge on Reggie, that would have been amazing. There are so many things I could have done differently. The opponent made many great plays as well, so credit to them for outplaying us in that last game. Um, but yeah, this team was a lot of fun. Credit to It's Axon for, uh, I don't know if he came up with it or if someone on his team, on his, uh, stream suggested it, but he was running it on his stream. We adopted it, copied it, ran into some sex success on our stream, went 18 and seven overall for one of our better days in a little while on stream and, uh, had a whole lot of fun with it as Charizard is one of my favorite Pokemon. It's always fun when it works out. 
I thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you're new around here, comment down below. All comments are appreciated. And all that said, thank y'all for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.